now we will see this question a six pole three phase alternator running at 1000 rpm supplies to an eight pole three phase induction motor so there is a six pole three phase alternator okay now its speed is 1000 1000 rpm it is a synchronous generator its rotor is running at 1000 rpm supplies to an eight pole three phase induction motor now it supplies to eight pole three phase induction motor now the rotor current of induction motor has a frequency of 2 hertz now the speed at which the induction motor is running he is asking students now the induction motor the stator of the induction motor holds the three phase winding to this three phase winding we need to give the supply then only the induction motor will run from where that supply is coming that supply is coming from this synchronous generator that supply is coming from synchronous generator now let us concentrate on synchronous generator first it is a six pole machine and the rotor of the synchronous generator is running at 1000 rpm students that means this is the synchronous speed of the synchronous generator so from the formula ns is equal to 120 f by p okay if the rotor of the synchronous generator is running at a speed of 1000 rpm where synchronous generator has six poles what is the frequency of the supply that is generated by the synchronous generator okay therefore what is the frequency of the supply given by the synchronous generator therefore what is the answer here f equal to 50 hertz f equal to 50 hertz that means induction motor stator has three phase armature winding so in that armature winding the currents and voltages will have the frequency of 50 hertz will have the frequency of 50 hertz fine now 50 hertz right yes <clears throat> so what is induction motor okay it is a singly excited machine we need to give supply only to the stator winding hence i have given supply to the stator winding now the rotor is rotating now the rotor rotates at a speed other than the synchronous speed or we can say rotor rotates at a speed very close to synchronous speed but less than the synchronous speed okay now <clears throat> now see here there is one data given the rotor currents has a frequency of 2 hertz we know that the rotor currents or the rotor voltages has a frequency of slip frequency okay so this is equal to 2 hertz now what is f here this f is the frequency of the currents and voltages of the stator now this s into 50 is equal to 2 therefore s yes is equal to 1 by 25 okay so this is the slip value now students see here <clears throat> when i have given 50 heads supply to the stator of the induction motor so what is it generally if we talk generally after giving power supply to the stator of the induction motor now the currents has a frequency of 50 heads a three-phased balance currents will flow in the three-phased balance welding of the induction motor. Then what will happen students? Then the rotating magnetic field is generated. Now this rotating magnetic field generates, now this rotating magnetic field rotates at a speed of synchronous speed. Then what is the synchronous speed of the rotating magnetic field students here? The synchronous speed of the rotating magnetic field is 120 F by P, where P is the number of poles of the induction machine. Now, therefore, this is 120 into F. F is the frequency of the currents and voltages flowing in the stator, which is 50 divided by, so how many poles of induction motor? It is 8. As simple as that. So, this is the synchronous speed. 
This is the speed at which the rotating magnetic field inside the induction motor is rotating. Fine. Now, what is the relation between the speed of the induction motor and this synchronous speed? N equal to N s into 1 minus s students. As simple as that. Therefore, N is equal to 120 into 50 divided by 8 into 1 minus. What is the value of s here? 1 by 25 we can easily find the speed of the induction motor. So let us calculate this value. So it will be 24 by 25. Okay. <clears throat> so let me write down here. So this is 120 into 50 into. So this is 24 divided by 25. 25 into 8 is 200 students. So 54s are 4 6 are. So therefore which is 720 rpm so this is the speed this is the speed at which the rotor of the induction motor is rotating students now what is the synchronous speed what is the speed of the rotating magnetic field here how much 42s are 430s are okay 15s so it is 750 rpm okay so 750 rpm is the 750 rpm is the speed of the rotating magnetic field obviously the speed of the rotor is close to that 750 rpm but has to be less than the 750 rpm and what is the only option here it is nothing but 720 rpm right so this is one very beautiful question okay <coughs> now the results of this slip test so we have done the slip test right what is a slip test? It is a test. It is an experiment to be performed on a salient pole mission to find the direct axis synchronous reactance and quadrature axis synch synchronous reactance. XT and XQ. Right. <clears throat> now, we have conducted the experiment and we have found the values of XD and XQ by taking the readings of the voltmeter and ammeter, if you remember that. Okay. So, that means there is a voltmeter in the test. There is an ammeter in the test. Voltmeter have we can see we can, we can take different readings, and ammeter also it will give different readings. So voltmeter have maximum value and it will have minimum value, and the ammeter also has maximum value and it will give the minimum value. Okay. Now what I told you in that experiment in that slip test. Okay. After observing the values of the voltmeter and ammeter readings xd is equal to maximum reading of the voltmeter by minimum reading of the ammeter students yes right similarly xq equal to minimum reading of the voltmeter divided by maximum reading of the ammeter students yes see one thing is very sure what is that xd is greater than xq xd is greater than xq just observe here okay so i think option b cannot be true so definitely because xd is less than xq similarly definitely not ready because we know this point we know this point xd is greater than xq now observe the two options a and c is only remaining here so we already got v max v minimum a max and a, a minimum so what is v max 180 volts 108 volts what is i minimum 10 ampere therefore what should be the value of xd students xd equal to 108 volts by 10 ampere which is 10.8 so we got the answer and what is xq xq is equal to minimum reading of the voltmeter divided by maximum reading of the ammeter where is the minimum reading of the voltmeter 96 divided by maximum reading of the ammeter 12 so which is 8 ohms right so this is xq and that is xd so which is a very good question okay so you can get these type of questions particularly in engineering services exam state public service commission exams ssc junior engineer exams and yeah they may be asked for one mark in gate exam as well a three phase 50 MVA 10 kV generator has a reactance of 0.2 ohms per phase. Fine. The reactance of the generator is given. 
Hence the per unit value of the reactants on a base of on a base of 10 MVA and 25 kV. Students, we know the formula. What is the formula? Okay, so Z per unit or X per unit is equal to actual value, students. Actual value. So for your clarity, I will write in ohms into MVA divided by kV whole square, kilo volt whole square. Students, this MVA and kV has to be bases, base values. Okay. So therefore, what is the per unit value of 0.2 ohms per phase? So that is equal to 0.2 into. So what is the MVA base value here? 100. You have to put only 100, not 100 into 10 power 6. If you put 100 into 10 power 6, in kilovolt base also, you have to put 25 into 10 power 3. Then it becomes 25 whole square into 10 power 3 whole square. Therefore, 10 power 6, 10 power 6 got cancelled. Don't get confused there. What I am saying here is, so it has to be 100 and this has to be 25 whole square. If you put 100 into 10 power 6, you, you have to put here 25 into 10 power 3. 10 power 3 whole square, 10 power 6, 10 power 6 got cancelled. Now calculate this value, how much this is? So therefore, it is 1 by 5 into 25 into 25. So this is 4 times. Fine. So I will take like this 400 divided by 5 into 25 into 1 by 100 just for to make the calculation very easy so this therefore this is 16 times and 3.2 so 3.2 divided by 100 which is 0 0.032 right so that is the answer it's just a matter of calculation 0 0.032 the short circuit ratio of a three phase alternator should be high. Yes, it should be high because there are many advantages. That's why it has to be high. Right. <clears throat> a is correct. A high value of short circuit ratio will decrease the value of voltage regulation. I told you. Okay. Because short circuit ratio is, in fact, I can write, I can write is equal to 1 by x s saturated per unit right yes now voltage regulation is directly proportional to i a into z s or x s that means short circuit ratio is inversely proportional to voltage regulation okay so my voltage regulation has to be low that means it is a good voltage regulation for voltage regulation has to be low, the short circuit ratio has to be high. Right. So a high value of short circuit ratio will decrease the value of voltage regulation. That means it is a better voltage regulation and increase the maximum power output. Okay, isn't it? Because what is the power output? EF into V divided by XS sine delta. Right. Okay. Now see here, short circuit ratio is inversely proportional to XS. Okay, so power also inversely proportional to excess. If I increase the short circuit ratio, this will increase the power. Yes, in fact, what is the maximum power? This is the maximum power. If I increase the short circuit ratio, the my maximum power will also get increased. Okay, therefore, both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. Right. <clears throat> And, and of course, by increasing the short circuit ratio, you are also increasing the stability of the machine. Right. Which of the following is the primary reason for placing the field on the rotor in alternator? So in alternator, okay, the field is placed on the rotor. If you see the DC machine, the field is placed on the stator where the armature winding is on the rotor. <clears throat> now see students, what is the reason for this? What is the reason for this? Because what is an alternator? This is the synchronous generator. It is supplying power. Where you are getting power, you are getting power from the power plant. So in the power plant, 
okay we will be we, somehow we will able to run the turbine and that turbine is connected to the rotor of my synchronous generator therefore my rotor of the synchronous generator will rotate and that generator will generate voltage all this power is coming from that synchronous generator so huge and high amounts of voltages and currents it has to deal it has to deal my synchronous generator from where we are getting we are getting from the stator of the synchronous generator isn't it yes from the stator of the synchronous generator we are getting the voltage and current so so obviously if there is that much amount of voltage see if there is a load now when there is a load there is a current if there is no load there is only voltage right yes so if there is that much amount of voltage is there i need to provide insulation okay if if the winding which is dealing with the high amount of voltages is stationary then providing insulation will be easy work right therefore what should be the answer here insulation of high voltage is made easy on the stator than on the rotor because stator is stationary it is easy which of the following methods gives more accurate result for determination of voltage regulation it is american standards association method or <coughs> american institution standard method so this is the one which gives more accurate result for the voltage regulation of an alternator next <clears throat> how can the reactive power delivered by the synchronous generator can be controlled how can now tell me how can we control the reactive power delivered by the synchronous generator students delivered by the synchronous generator can be controlled by changing the prime mover input by changing the excitation by changing the direction of the rotation by changing the prime mover speed so if it is an alternator by changing the prime mover speed you can only change the frequency of the power supply it is generating by changing the direction of the rotation you can change phase sequence you can only change phase sequence if it is r y b you can do it for r b y you can change the phase sequence by changing the prime mover speed you can only change frequency of the supply or frequency of the voltages the generator is generating by changing the excitation students so by changing the excitation we can able to change the reactive power therefore we can able to control the power factor of the generator or the motor therefore we can able to control the power factor of the synchronous machine by changing the excitation 